We're just gonna be straight faced the entire time. Right. You know what? Let me tell you something. It took us my god, literally like two hours to get this stream to work. But we're good now. We have good quality. Nice delay. It's perfect. Uh, if the audio is delayed, we apologize. Um, doesn't really matter. I don't think you really probably care because you're probably smoking your cigar. Um, well, we'd start out. I am smoking our one year beautiful, delectable, luscious one year aged eight years? Yes. Eight years aged. Eight years. This dog turd right here is the most flavorful thing I've picked up in my yard. I don't know where it came from. Music cutter. So, okay, let me cut it like four times. All right. So, let me bring up the thing. You guys, I hope that you're lighting up a cigar right now. And if you're not, that sucks. why not? All right. So, actually, let's just get this. Let's get it lighted. Hurry up. Well, this is the official Cigars of Pot, Cigars of Valor podcast. There's not any other, so yes, it's the official. Um, we started. We wanted to actually have a podcast where we didn't talk about politics. You know, things that people normally disagree on. We want to talk about just fun things. You know, have a good time smoking a cigar. You're supposed to relax and not, you know, feel Absolutely. stressed. And so um, our podcast will last about an hour, maybe 40 minutes, hour 15, somewhere around that time. Just about as long as it takes to smoke one of these cigars. Um, now, I mean, you can you can drag a cigar out for a long time. So, it, yeah, you know, so it's just... It's however it is, but we're trying to target a good 40 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes or so. So we have a quite a fun this thing again. Do you light it? Do you light it side? Oh, you light here. You spin it. Why is it so clockwise? Clockwise. Why is it so complex? It's really not. You just don't know how to use it. I do light here. Oh, come on. Okay, so. Alright. So, we're trying to keep this uh, this podcast relatively friendly, like family friendly in a, in a sense. Not. Um, we do have like a joking dark humor if you kind of know us. Uh, so, I guess we'll get into. Why Cigars of Valor was created. I'm just going to start off tight, then it'll open up. I know. I'm just trying to get it, get it going. So, we are uh, we were created. Actually, it sounds better if, if we talk about it. So, like, a couple years ago, we constantly talked about opening our own uh, cigar shop. And we just pulled up outside. Up, like right there. Um, yeah, we were talking about opening our own cigar shop for a while, and you know, it's just kind of, you know, like you could open a shop just like everyone else, you know, and, and it would probably be great, but that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for like good quality cigars to to sell, and uh, you know, people would smoke them, and they're like, "Wow, you know, this is different. This is really good, really strong, not strong, but like just." flavorful strong flavors that's what I mean so um, we wanted that and then Travis's history with law enforcement we wanted to have uh, a brand that supported law enforcement because nobody really does like everybody talks about it no business really just goes out there and does it so that's what we want to do we want to specifically show that we care we connect with them we want to provide good quality cigars support to them everything so that's part of our mission. Okay, this is going good. As we're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because like law enforcement, all the 
public service is, is very tough. And we know law, law enforcement specifically from someone that's got a past in it uh, is, is extremely tough. Mentally, physically, emotionally. It's exhausting. It can be exhausting. It's exhausting on your dogs, too. So. Um, Especially when you have no support. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to. We want to have various members of law enforcement, though we can't really tell like where they're from. I mean, they might reveal it. It doesn't matter. We'll leave it up to them. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave it up to them. There's some agencies have a policy against that. So we yeah. Really respect their, their yeah, policies. Yeah. I don't want to talk a little tiny bit louder. Probably can hear you, but you know. Sometimes agencies have I'm a sure policy heard against you. it. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, we are out in Rowlett, Texas. Uh, that's where we grew up. We kind of uh, we we have shops that are around here, uh, like in Fuego Rockwall and Fuego Murphy. We're at El Dorado Cigar and Rockwall now and at El Dorado and Bikini too. So off the El Dorado Parkway. On, yes, right on, off. Is that their first Park. store? That was the original El Dorado. So they called it El Dorado because El Dorado. It was on El Dorado Parkway. Okay, all right. And we're also at Nacogdoches Cigar Co. Mm -hmm. In Nacogdoches, Texas. And that's a cool shop because yeah, you walk cool. in the front and it looks like an antique store. And they have some cabinets that don't touch me. You touched me. Anyways, they have some cabinets, you know, with some cigars, but it looks like you're in an antique shop. So they got a bunch of antiques for sale. But if you're a member, you go to the, there's like a door at the very back and you walk through it, obviously. And mm -hmm. there's like a cigar lounge back there with a full bar and all that stuff. And you, I think members have 24 hour access to it. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Yeah, and the uh, the strip there is like all Western, like old Western, yeah, like uh, is it the oldest town? Isn't it? it is the oldest town in Texas. It's the yes. oldest town in Texas. I don't I don't know who came here and then settled in that exact spot and made that the first town out of all the places in Texas. But I don't know either. That That's is, I mean, it's like a random remote centered area to be. But you know, whatever. Uh, Nacogdoches is like a hidden gem. It's really cool. It's a really, really beautiful town. Yeah, and the area surrounding it's pretty awesome. I, I love Southeast Texas. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's cool. They had uh, and there's like hills and stuff that you can see oh, while you're yeah, in the it's town. Beautiful. It's really cool. Yeah, like I, I didn't sides. expect to see that in Texas. Like to be honest, like hill country is beautiful, and I mm -hmm. thought it was kind of secluded to that. But you know, out in the east, mm -hmm. no, there's that's, a. That's what I love about Texas. It's every region has its own beauty. To mm -hmm. me. I mean, we're. We're technically in the lakes and prairies region, which would be beautiful if there wasn't a bunch of cities here. It'd be a lot of trees and rivers going through. Mm -hmm. So, then, Travis and I have family that have been in military or in the military. Uh, I had uncles that were, or an uncle that was in the Navy, uh, great uncle was in the Navy, worked for NASA, and then I got my grandpa who was a lieutenant colonel in World War II. So we kind of have a, a family respect for Absolutely. military, though I never was in the military. Travis was in law enforcement. He was a sheriff's deputy. He was also a... Uh, I have a total six years of experience in law enforcement, combination of police and sheriff's office. But my granddad, he was a captain in the Air Corps, which is now the Air Force, and he flew the P-51 yeah. Mustang in World War II. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty badass. Yeah, that's cool stuff. There was a... Uh, yeah, mine flew the P-51 Mustang, uh, the B-29, and then whatever the first jet was, he got to test it or something mm -hmm. like that. He said it was fastish. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so yeah, he said it was super fast, and I uh, thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um... Let's see what else we got. We're trying to like, you know, have talking points. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we actually released recently some shirts. Yes, we did. Um, we have our first shirt. You can view them on our website at cigarsofvalor.com. Uh, we have one that's like, what is it, a skull with two styrogs mm -hmm. and yeah. a green beret? Yes. And, uh, and it says. 
Yeah, it says, I hunt the evil you pretend doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that quote. Like, it's uh, it's, it's an amazing quote. Because it's, I mean, really, in in reality, it's like when you you actually, like, become friends with people that are in law enforcement, because they're humans, you know, a lot of people think they're just robots that go around and give them tickets. But, I mean, you can clearly see in today's cities, too, like, the consequences of not enforcing the law, like, where they're not allowed to do it, and you see what what came about and I'm not going to get too far into that but it's um, you know it just shows big time now um, that quote is it shows the side that nobody hears about you know no one hears it you know the news is very negative but they never they never talk about like actually what goes on with police you know other than to bash them so that's that's why we want to we want to back them and we want to back the the real police the, the guys that get up every day to protect communities, you know, not, you know, of course there's a bad apple in every batch, you know, so it's, we, everyone understands that, everyone knows that, but it doesn't mean everyone is bad, so we just, you know, that's, that's part of our mission, like we want to talk and show support and bring awareness and, you know, so that's uh, one of the things of the podcast is we just want to get people to relax, have a cigar, or even just have fun, hang out, get to know us better and and um, we bring various people on. Um, yeah, we have like what, like three, or four people lined up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. already that want to talk on here. We have there cigar are, shops. Yeah, we have a cigar shop owner. We have a few law enforcement that are gonna yeah. come hang out, smoke a cigar, talk with us. It, it, it is, I'm excited. It's gonna yeah, be it's gonna be cool. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Um, all right, so. So uh, next week yeah. is our is Cigars of Valor's uh, one year anniversary of us being in business, and so to celebrate, we're having a, a really big event mm-hmm. at in Fuego Murphy, uh, September third, from five to nine. Yeah, yeah, five to nine. Yeah, yeah. And we had a cigar that's, blended. That's Saturday, right? Next Saturday. Yes. We had a cigar blended just for this event, and he is smoking it. Oh, right it's now. fantastic! This is, this is probably, this is my favorite cigar. Yeah, I, I think this is, in its own unique way with the flavors and everything. This is my, this is probably the best cigar I've ever smoked. I don't think anything's topped this. Like it's, it's aged eight years. Mm-hmm. What's the blend that's in it? It is a Maduro San Andres wrapper with a Sumatra binder with a double Dominican Lajero filler. Mm-hmm. So it, oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's extremely complex. It's uh, The flavor explodes. It's, it's a fantastic. You know, the, the blend is amazing, but the age, the aging added on to yeah. it, yeah. it's just it's so smooth. Like it's, Absolutely. gosh, you know? And so like with the, with the broadleafs, the broadleaf was such a hit too mm. and it, i mean so part of it's it yeah part like you know a big portion of it is the aging that's on it oh yeah and, and it's like wine the longer it ages the better it gets yeah generally so yeah we're gonna have one shot one and sergeant smoky Correct. next week so yeah it's pretty cool we're excited to have them down they're gonna hang out with us for a few days um uh, we're gonna have a good time. We're going to go uh, to a gun range, a few cigar lounges. We're going to obviously have our event. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Mm-hmm. Greatly looking forward to it and uh, greatly looking forward to meeting them. Yeah, that's going to be really cool. Because they have done a lot for us. Yeah, they. you know, uh, Juan does the photos for our products on the website and everything. And, they're, man, they're fantastic. Like they're, mm-hmm. And honestly, like that couldn't have came at a more perfect time. Too. Like, we needed good photos. Like, all the photos we were taking yeah, looked like looked absolutely. Like, <laughs> yeah, was yeah, yeah, so, like, I'm looking on there, and I'm like, dang, how do I get good photos? Like, what do you what do? you do? And then Juan, like, uh, sends us some photos, and I'm like, hey. Okay, we'll like, just send him <laughs> some cigars. Yeah, and, can, uh, can we send you cigars and you and take photos his of them? product that he has sent back to us is phenomenal. It is out of this world. Yeah. And then Sergeant Smokey, he has, he's just taken some pretty badass photos. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite is the one, the, uh, I think it's the El Prez with the thin blue line flag in the background. 
Yeah. And it has the challenge coin of the Maryland State Police up in the corner. Yeah, the Maryland one. Yeah, that, that was, was a good photo. That, that was, was awesome. a really good photo. <laughs> my, <coughs> sorry. My other favorite photo is the one with Juan, and he was talking about his uh, military service with yeah. the flag. Dude, yeah, that was that one of the coolest yeah. things I've seen. And then it, our cigar was in it. That was so mm-hmm. awesome. It was, it was an honor, oh. honestly. Yes. It's it's seriously like I felt we felt very honored to have you know Juan show his you know talk about his military background and and everything and like it's such a deep message absolutely you know and then have our cigars and it it's, it was amazing it was really good and we've had we had a lot of support from a lot of people too like El Dorado is great to us and and uh, and Fuego they're amazing oh like, yeah uh, it's it, everyone like all the shops are fantastic to us yes. like it's in fuego and el dorado they gave us a, a chance uh, they, they gave us our start essentially mm-hmm. so we are forever grateful and uh yeah greatly appreciative yeah we're really happy to be a part of all of them mm-hmm. and be in their shops um yeah, we plan on bringing them on uh, the owners of those shops we're going to try and bring them on the podcast interview them talk to them smoke a cigar with them, have a good time, you know, typical stuff. I hope the microphone's picking you up. I hope it is, too. Just try to, try to speak at it a little more, because you're quiet right now. <laughs> no, don't get that close. Just get... Just. Can you hear me? I'm sure they hear you. Hello? Everyone's turning their volume down now. Good. Yeah, so like we said earlier, we just wanted like a, a podcast just so that we can show our faces and uh, connect better with everyone and kind of grow a community around it. Yeah, it'd be really cool. It'd be it'd be really cool to have like a cigars of valor community. No, oh, I would love where that. everyone connects, talks, mm-hmm. talks about cigars, you know, guns, uh, fun stuff. Yeah, you, know, you meet just quality people around that yeah, are absolutely. that are into cigars and everything. You meet some great people while smoking cigars for real. It's a uh, really nice like every every time i go to a cigar lounge it is good conversation Mm -hmm. it's fun everyone there is you know moderately intelligent and it's yeah until we walk in the door yeah until we walk in the door you know like so the iq drops a couple points but it's great it's good talking to people like we used to over at elite and addison we used to talk to that one guy Um, Corey. no there was yeah Corey's cool too um there was a one guy that was like a professor or something. I lost track, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there, I, there's a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, when I was we, there, I used to talk. Usually, yeah. I would talk to a guy, and he was a uh, he was like some professor, and we talk like philosophical. Uh, you know, it was just fun, just great conversation. You know, I enjoyed going up there and just communicating with people. You know, it was it was fun, and you get to have a cigar, Absolutely. you get to relax, you get to talk to good people. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I see you have a pretty good topic on here. What? Uh, is Bloom mold? Yeah. It is not mold. Well, have you seen the lab studies that show that it was mold? I just think what I was going to ask, too, if you read the other part of the question, mm-hmm. even though there, there is lab studies... But like, I know Bloom. I know there really is Bloom, but like, how do you identify it? Like, what was it? Uh, and then on top of that, the second part of the question is: these are aged for eight years, and mm-hmm. there's no Bloom. You know, these these have been sitting for a long time. There's no Bloom mm-hmm. on them. So, you know what? Do you, I mean, do you know? Like, is it? Um, it's. A case by case, I guess, uh, because I've opened. Uh, I notice a lot of you get a lot of bloom on cigars that are in metal tubes surrounded by cedar, or like they've been sit enclosed in a cedar well, you know, box. Mold likes dark, yeah. humid like places. Yeah, yeah, so that's probably. You know what? The more you talk about, the more si- the more it makes sense. <laughs> and I just, I, 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 I think I'm not accepting. You know, like I mean, if you look at this at this cigar, there is little patches on it that are some areas that are darker on it. That's just aging. Yeah, I know. But that's what I was saying. That like that's the only thing I've seen on aging. I mean, there was sometimes there was like little 
tiny um, reflective kind of crystals on it. On yeah, some that's cigar coming up. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. What bloom was not actual. It looks like a you know rotting banana yeah, or something. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. If it looks like a rotting banana. That's that's not good. Yeah, that would. You, you might want to get any humidor. That wouldn't be good at that. all. No. But I mean, honestly, like. If there's little mold dots on your cigar, not not from us, I'm saying. If you if you if you see that from us, like that's really strange because we do look at every single one of ours. But yes, before we um, send it out. Yeah, and definitely let us know. But it's uh, honestly like if you did have mold on the cigar, just, just you know wipe it off, smoke it. It just burns. Like it's not gonna affect you unless you have like a real bad allergy for it. But I mean, I'm I'm allergic to mold, and it doesn't. It never did anything to me. I have smoked plenty of cigars of bloom. Yeah. On them, and I'm. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't go to the doctor. Um, so, let's, uh, let's read some articles. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah, let's Dude, read that some was articles. Hilarious. Yeah, that so, was fantastic. We were, so, we, we want to, we're just kind of like killing some time. Um, go to the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start out with that one. <laughs> All right. All right. You want to read it? Or I'll read yeah, it? I'll read it. I'll read okay. It. So we, we're getting these from policeone.com, a fantastic website. Yeah. Uh, these are old articles from a newspaper, it looks like. Um, looks like... <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> a man reported that a squirrel was running in circles on Davis Drive and was not sure if he was sick or had been hit by a car. An officer responded, and as he drove down the street, he ran over the squirrel. <laughs> How awful. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's so bad. That is <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> that, we, uh, were, we were kind of reading some things to see if they'd be, like, you know, appropriate or, or something that, like, because, you know, some things are boring and you don't want to read them. And then we read that one, and we are like, Oh my gosh, that's, yeah, that's coming on there. Yeah, that was funny. We're definitely going <laughs> on. Can't imagine the, the caller as he's watching this squirrel know, in the street. The, he, especially calling the cops about a squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. And he watches that squirrel that probably has rabies. That's why he's running around in circles. <laughs> yeah. It's squashed by, it looks like a pretty old article. So probably by Crown Vic. Or yeah, this is old. These are all newspaper articles. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm not saying that that's old or anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting triggered. Alright. What's another one? Well, I mean, they don't land in our sense of humor, to be honest. Some of these. Whoa. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Like this is <laughs> like a perfect if, example. If you're gonna call the cops <laughs> about this, uh, you just you need to be shot, okay? Yeah. Jeez, he said it, not me. So this one says, Your turn. "Police were called to Market Square for a report about a suspicious coin." The investigating officer reported it was a quarter. This is like, okay, so like this, it, it's showing like multiple different like police calls for the day, like, you know, in the newspaper, I yeah. guess, because they had nothing else to do, especially if you're reading do the Do the missing bacon. I want to read that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, read it. Police solve case of the missing bacon. A Grand Rapids resident told police last week that someone had entered his home during the night and taken five pounds of bacon <laughs> from the refrigerator. Right. Upon further investigation, police discovered his wife had gotten up for a late night snack, but was afraid to admit it. Five pounds. She ate five <laughs> pounds of Even bacon. cooked, that's like three pounds, you know, or something. You know how long that must have been? <laughs> and the smell and the sound. Yeah. And how did he not wake up during this? Five pounds. If I smell coffee or bacon in the morning... I'm immediately waking up. Dude, five pounds. 
That's like we go to like Burger Island. I bet her cholesterol <laughs> is insane. Uh, we, we go to like Burger Island, and it's a half pound burger, you mm-hmm. know, and that's like you're stuffed. Five pounds of bacon. That is amazing. That's like twenty thousand calories. <laughs> it's like oh my can't gosh. imagine what they look like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Name your pet something <laughs> stupid just for this instance. All right, it says A caller reported at 7:14 p.m. that someone was on a porch yelling help from a residence on Bank Street. Officers responded and learned the person was calling a cat that is named Help. So, growing up, my my dad told me this story when he was younger, I guess. So, one of his sisters had a cat named Shitass <laughs> that would send her kids walking around the neighborhood look calling for this cat. <laughs> Shitass. <laughs> that is, that's amazing. I want to do that. Gosh. Oh, man. That might be a good one to read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Police were informed February 25th by a resident of the 1,000 block of whatever the hell drive that is, uh, that a family in the area is taking over the minds of local dogs and turning them against their owners. Police were advised by the person that the only way to protect a dog is to install an anti-force field (laughs) on its head before letting the animal go outside. Is this Quinlan? What city was that? I didn't say. It had to be like Quinlan or something. It's definitely a rough town. The person <laughs> believes the only way to protect her animal is to put a anti-force field on its head okay. before letting it outside. You know, if you want to get like very literal on this. A force field is like something that blocks something. So an anti-something that well, blocks something. Like a something. foil helmet or what? No, it would be like an anti-foil helmet is what they're saying. So like, I mean technically the, the word would be to put a force field on its head. But an anti-force field. Amazing. It's got to be Quinlan, Texas. 100%. Alright. Alright, we're not reading that one. No. All right, yeah, all right. Arnold is creeping out the children. You read it. All right. The Learning Center on Hanson Street reports a man across the way stands at his window for hours watching the center, making parents nervous. Police ID the subject as a cardboard cutout of Arnold Schwarzenegger. (laughs) That's, That's good. That's a good one. Wait, the police is going to ring the doorbell and we... <laughs> <laughs> the, the name! The Why name. did you just name that? Alright. In Fairfield... You already know something's going down. Sorry, the part of it's re- redacted. A man who lives in Fairfield filed a complaint with police on Sunday about someone ringing his doorbell and leaving a photocopy of a buttocks <laughs> on his front stoop. The complainant, Edgar Butts, B-U-T-T-S, told police the incident has happened several times in the past two weeks. You think it might be related to his name? No, no, not at all. Yeah. 
No, there's no correlation there. I don't know. I mean, these are like newspaper articles, so they have to be... They have to be old, so like, I bet you like the phone book, someone's looking in the phone book for somebody butts and then decide. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. dedication. Yeah, that is uh it's quite intelligent. Legal advice, here we go. Hey, man, can... There you go. Yeah, that that's one. a uh, that's that that's is, definitely like uh, a uh, West Texas community member. Um yeah, no shit. Uh no, oh, sorry. Don't mean to cuss here. A man came to the sheriff's office to find out how to legally kill <laughs> a person who was harassing him. Let me tell you how to legally kill someone. Play Grand Theft Auto. Yes, play Grand Theft Auto. Alright, yeah, we didn't even try that. Mount Pleasant, huh? I don't know if that's Mount Pleasant, Texas, or... Is there another Mount? Isabella County? Nah, uh, I can't remember what county Mount Pleasant's in. We can read the story and find out. I'm sure that, that might say a lot. Yeah, you might, might as well just read it. 34-year-old Mount Pleasant man was arrested Wednesday and lodged at the Isabella County Jail for a domestic assault for pulling the arm of a woman and hitting her in the head with a sub sandwich. I mean... Did it... That just sounds like a normal assault. Yeah, I know. Uh, that just... Was it like an Italian sandwich? Yeah, what... Was it a cooked Reuben? There's nothing really humorous here. Just... I don't know. But I probably like if we didn't read it, everyone would be like, what What did it say? Yeah, you know, good so. point. Okay. Scroll past that one. The vehicle was going to the deputy. <laughs> deputy responded to report the vehicle stopped in mailboxes. Mm. It was the mailman. I have actually responded <laughs> to that call before. For so, real? yeah. A deputy responded to a report of, ve of a vehicle stopping at mailboxes. It was the mailman. <laughs> I have responded to that call before. Did you really? Yeah. You have more to enlighten us on it? It was the mailman. What kind of what? It was either the mailman. Uh, they have, like, lights and, like, things that say U.S. mail on the side of them? Uh, it says rural route carrier out there. It was always the mailman and the paper route. Because they cruised up to your house at like 2 or 3 in the morning. And they slow down really quick, throw something out the window, <laughs> then floor it. And I received several calls about that. Mm -hmm. And, no, I mean, it's the newspaper. Which, usually the route carriers are... I'm just going to leave that opinion to myself. Man. I don't know. I could say a lot about that. A woman in the 1900 block of 129th Lane Northeast, what a street, reported October 15th <laughs> that someone must have stolen her mail because she did not receive birthday cards from some of her friends. In Thai told. Yeah, that's called like... I don't even know. I, that's just entitlement. That's what that is. We're going to skip it. Okay. I don't even know. Who would call the cops about that? Because her husband smelled. Was it, he dead? <laughs> yeah, did he die? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I just don't understand. Like, Let's read one more and move on to a different topic. Yeah, we will. We're going to find a good one. There's nothing really funny about that. <laughs> I don't know. It's like terrible. Gosh, no, we there we, we go. We can't, can't we, read we that. We can read that. We can't. <laughs> it's bad. For those of you that have sensitive ears, close them. 4700 block of Portside Drive, Vermillion. A man put icy hot on his wife's vibrator to voice pending. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, you, ever, you remember the... I wonder how his hospital business Do you remember, going. like, the kids in middle school, like, talking about how they put Icy Hot on their thing? Uh, yeah, or itching powder <laughs> and... Yeah, shit like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Yeah, so... Next week is going to be... The well, next weekend is going to be very eventful. It's going to be fun. One year. You know, like... We have grown quite a bit. Yeah. In a year. It's, um... Um... It's pretty good. We've gotten five, five cigar shops. and Yes. And the fact that we're still here a year later... Yeah. Is... That, that says a lot. Uh... I'm really eager to see what our second year has in uh, has in store for us. Uh, we definitely are going to focus on growing the brand, uh, just getting the name out there. Um, I think we're satisfied with how many cigars we have uh, right now. Uh, we just want to get the name going. Yeah. And what do we? How many we got now? We how have. Because right I know we have we have ten, but we have. Some in the shops and that are exclusive for the shops, and we also have some that are exclusively online. Mm -hmm. That way, you have a draw to the website. And uh, so, yeah, we have about like the one year you can only get at the brick and mortars because you mm -hmm. got you you got to support your brick and mortars. You yeah, gotta do something exclusive for them. And this one's gonna be limited, right? Yeah, there's only so many of those. I think we only have a few hundred of them. Yeah. So uh, our goal year two is to grow, uh, just grow the brand, and uh, that's just survive, I guess. I don't know. Let's make, try and make it, provide people with awesome cigars. Yeah, I think if we stick to our mission, and you know, it's not like we're getting in and over our heads at anything, and. You know, if we're taking our time. We're taking it slow. Yeah, that's the best thing to do. Don't want to rush it. Yeah, most people they want to when they open a business they want to rush it and, and make a million bucks on the first day. You know, mm, so that's it's like, not going to happen. It, it's a gradual incline. You know, we want to build relationships at the same time, sell cigars, and mm -hmm. you know, over time that when you build relationships and you're good to people and you show that you're consistent, your product's good. It doesn't change like every restaurant. What was that? That's. Uh, uh my phone. How come your phone goes offline? Doesn't now. Uh, disgusting. I don't know. So, all right, I'm just going to fix that. Yes. Sorry. So, unlike every restaurant that opens and then slowly declines in quality, we're going to stay consistent and work on building our quality from our factory. Not every restaurant's like that. Just work on that. <laughs> Most. Maybe not Mihas. Uh, Me house is delicious. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even understand. Best tacos. Um, and then too bad they closed their location. Well, they moved. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, they moved to. Uh, just a open another spot one. that's a little far out of the way. And it's just annoying. And oh well. What are you gonna do? Yeah. So I don't think I ever. Just, so what I'm smoking right now, uh, it's called the Veil. It's our. Maduro San Andres wrapper with a Dominican and Nicaraguan blend inside of it. Fantastic cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, the Maduro San Andres, I'm, sh uh, I'm sure a lot of you that smoke cigars know, is known for being a little bit more, more on the spicy side. And then you got the Nicaraguan blended with the Dominican in there, so you get a little bit more spice, makes a little bit of sweetness. It's pretty delicious. Yeah. You want to tell everyone about the broadleaf? Mm. So we have a Connecticut Broadleaf uh, with a Dominican Nicaraguan filler. It's called the ACE. It's named after uh, the compartmentalized Army compartmentalized elements, which is we all know is Delta. Uh, is the Exfil series? Uh, we named our cigars in the Exfil series after special operations groups in the U.S. military, such as the ACE. Uh, we named one the Frog, uh, after the Frogman, the Seals. And what is the Frog? It's a Candela wrapper with a Nicaraguan filler. Yeah, it's green. It is delicious. Uh, 
Uh, it's good. It's different. It's hit the shelves in the shops, is, and it is flying. Is the Candela the one that's the... It's from Africa? Is mm -hmm. that tobacco? Okay. That's the Cameroon. Oh, the Cameroon. Okay. Yeah, in the future, we plan on having a Cameroon, too. We already do. Oh, we do? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's that one. Okay. It's the concealment... Uh, not the concealment. The cover in the concealment series. Okay, maybe I'm getting them mixed up. Okay. I think... Yeah. I thought we both had one of the two. Okay. I don't know. It was just... I get confused. We're going to have oh. a company staff meeting with a quiz on all of our cigars. I leave the tobacco up to him. The one with the education in it. I'm wondering... I just watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'm kidding. I uh, was taught just about everything I know from... Uh, the first cigar shop I worked for, which was Calypso Cigar Lounge, which is no longer there. That was the first shop? Mm-hmm. That was the first shop I worked for, and uh, he made me sit down and read the Tobacconist University handbook. I had to read every page of it, and he tested me on it. Um, so... Tell us how you got into cigars. And my dad. Yeah. That's and then and then after you tell us that. See, he started smoking them and I thought it was funny because we would be at like like Red River or something. It's a hockey tongue. And I would we'd smoke this or he'd smoke a cigar and it would just everyone would leave. It, and it was so funny. I call like it, it was idiot hilarious. repellent. Yeah, it was idiot repellent. And then we would go, we would go there, and I started smoking them just to like mess with people, you know, like because everyone's like, "Oh my god, a cigar," you know, and uh, it, it was really funny. Um, but then I, you know, I started enjoying them, I started liking them and stuff, so I smoke them every now and then, maybe once every couple months or something. And um, what was funny is he moved over to West Texas, West Texas, and I, I think that was before, before I got into them, right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. So he was. He was out in West Texas before that, and what's hilarious is his experience with West Texas and smoking a cigar on his porch every morning while he was a officer out there, or a, a sheriff, yeah. a deputy. So, I worked night shifts, and it was 6P to 6A, so my nightly routine when I got off work was I'd sit on my patio and smoke a cigar. Uh, well, that's about the time everyone's leaving to go to work. Uh, and my neighbor comes outside one morning and says, That smells good! What is that? And I think it was a Monte Cristo Platinum that I was smoking. And I told him, That was a Monte Cristo Platinum! Those things were fire a long time ago. Yeah, they were delicious. They got Peruvian in them. So they're fantastic cigars. Mm -hmm. And um, so I gave him one. And uh, I was leaving for work at 6 p.m. that day. And he's coming home from work while he's sitting on his patio smoking the Monte Cristo Platinum. And he said, man, this cigar is amazing. Holy shit. So fast forward for the, to that following weekend, I'm off. And I go outside, and he's smoking a cigar while mowing his lawn. And I'm like, hey, man, how you doing? And I look across, and the guy is across the street from me is smoking a cigar on his patio. And I said, I didn't, I said hey, I didn't know you smoked cigars. He said, oh, well. John got me into him. I said, All right. And then, you know, fast forward a few months later, I walk outside one day to go to work, and neighbor next to me smoking a cigar, neighbor across from me smoking a cigar, neighbor down the street smoking a cigar. I have my whole street just about smoking cigars. It, It's a plague. It spreads. You know, you're starting to see cigars in movies more now. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, out in the West, it just kind of, like, spread out and went West into California and stuff, and then now it's, like, in Hollywood. Uh, yeah. Your dad has single-handedly caused millions of people mm -hmm. to smoke cigars. Good. That's pretty funny. Well, COVID helped the cigar industry quite a bit. You know, like, when I was <clears throat> when I was little, like, your dad would smoke the cigars, and you're just like, oh, you know. Like, oh, yeah. He, but he... He's gotten better, but he smoked the uh, the bundles of you cigars. Know, Three dollar bundles. Uh, there are like a, you could get a bundle of cigars, like twenty five for fifty bucks, something like that. 
And Jeez. there were some good ones, but there were some that they smelt like you. The way I described it was you took an Olympic runner's shoe that had set out in the rain in, uh, let's say, South Texas for about three months. So it has mold and shit growing in it. You put that through a shredder, uh, roll that up in a tobacco leaf, sprinkle a little bit of cat feces on it, and light it up and smoke it. That's about what it smelled like. That sounds good. Quality. God, how did I... I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, well. Builds character, right? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Do we have any events coming up after? Isn't there, like, in the future, an air show or something? October? Yeah, we're shooting to mm-hmm. do the air show in the, at Alliance Airport. Uh, the Alliance Air Show. We're going to try and set up there. Uh, we are... We're going to be doing uh, the Blue Bonnet Air Show in Burnett, Texas next year. Mm -hmm. We did that earlier this year, and it was a great turnout. I really enjoyed it. It was a good time. So we're going to do it again this year. Or, sorry, next year. Whatever. I'm still in 2022. And uh, we'll plan on doing some more private events. We're trying to get connected with some wineries down in Central Texas. Maybe we could team up with them, do some stuff. Uh, we We got some stuff coming. It just, it takes time. Because we're a new company, and no one really knows us yet. Yeah. And then we're also um, going to try and sponsor a table at the Family of the Fallen uh, Gala in Fort Worth in October. We're going to try and sponsor a table there. Yeah, just help out. Yeah, that's the least we could do is help out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that that dance or something. That was going yeah, on. it's a dance. It's more. <clears throat> of a, I've never been to a gala. Do you dance at a gala? I don't know. I don't know. Gala, gala, gala. Whatever the. How are they saying? A gala. Yeah, some people call it a gala, but whatever. Uh, tomato, tomato. Yeah, exactly. But I don't know. Do you dance at a gala? Because I don't know how to dance. I look like Helen Keller out there having a seizure. It's not good. You know, I got I got something we can talk about for the next few minutes. Cool movies. Okay. He's in the Travis is into the mobsters. He's into the mobster movies. Likes little mob movies. Mm Mm-hmm. What's uh? I haven't really seen any of them. I saw that one with uh. No no no! You'll drive. Oh, Black Mass. With yeah, yeah, I saw Dead that. About James Whitey Boulder. Gosh. That was Evil brutal. people. <laughs> brutal. Oh, God. Um, uh, no, my favorite is probably, uh, of course, I'm a basic when I say this, but Goodfellas. That's a fantastic movie. Just uh, beautifully orchestrated. The I've acting never seen it. that. Yeah. Watch The Irishman. It is what it is. Yeah, so those are great. Uh, one of actually one of our favorite movies is The Accountant. That's a great movie. That was a fantastic movie. Mm-hmm. Um, this is awesome, awesome movie. Um, what was the? Uh, what's another one? Oh, uh, you ever watched Interstellar? No, I never watched that. That's such a good movie. That's I like it was on my. That's like my all-time favorite movie. I heard it was good. Yep. And then uh, most recent movie was uh, that I liked. I liked Gray Man. I knew Gray Man. You knew one? <laughs> like the guy, I can't like, do it as well as you can. Like the guy that I knew. Uh, I knew a guy in New Or Ar- that went to New Orleans once. So, a little <laughs> backstory on that. So, we're, we're eating lunch with a rowlet officer. And... This rowlet officer said uh, that he grew up or he was from New Orleans. And this guy chimes in saying, I knew a guy that went to New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. And just leaves it. Yeah. Just, just. And he's just, like. Just leaves it. We're both staring like, <laughs> is that, is that it? Yeah, is <laughs> like, that it? Like, so every now and again, I like to throw that in there just to no give him some grief. But I can't do it as well as he does. Yeah. I knew a guy once like that. 
I know a guy that went to New Orleans. It's pretty bad. Mm. So, another thing we're trying to work on next year is a Memorial Day event. But we're trying to connect with a ranch down in Central Texas. And uh, they got a gun range. We're going to do like a ruck march. If you, if it's, uh, you buy your way in. You buy your spot. You bring your gun. Bring some ammo. Uh, we just have a good time. It's going to be like a three-day event. Um, come out. Shoot shit. You can ruck march if you want. We're going to do a charity ruck march. And uh, every bit of money we generate from that event, we're going to donate mm -hmm. to a, a 501C that helps the families of fallen officers and firefighters and military. Yeah, last so, year we, yeah, I mean, we don't talk about it generally because it's, I don't know, we don't, we don't need to boast about things like that. Mm -hmm. But we, um, last year, what we donated in December, yeah, we just started, we were half a year and we didn't do much. Not even half a year. I mean, we were, we had started in September. Yeah. So we weren't even half a year in. Uh, but we did what yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did, did what we, we could. We donated the entire month's profit, and then I put money on top, and then mm -hmm. yeah, personal. And absolutely. Yeah, ho hopefully that helped them. I never heard anything about it, but. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we just, we, we want to help yeah, in that that's, situation. That's what we're That's doing. a devastating time for that family. Yeah, that was the. I don't know if you want to talk about it. Or who it was. Yeah, well, if you want to find out, go through our Instagram and our Facebook, you'll see it. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't want to say. But no. let, let them kind of move on. This is not the place or time to plug. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we have, we have no interest in, like, boasting about that stuff. Like, I don't know, I feel... The only reason I mentioned it about the Memorial Day deal is so you know what it's for. Mm -hmm. What's well, different? Not that. The other thing. What about... But we just want to help out our heroes and, and do what's right. So on our next um, next podcast next week, we're going to have Juan and we're going to have mm -hmm. Sergeant... Sergeant Smokey. Yeah, Sergeant Smokey. I don't know why I keep thinking Sto Sergeant Stogie. You're, th you're I'm thinking, thinking, of, I'm thinking, you're thinking of Stogie, of Stogie Trooper. Trooper. Yeah, yeah, it's like tripping me out. Um... Yeah, we're going to have uh, Sergeant Smokey and One Shot One on yeah. a podcast with us. Yeah, That's going to be gonna cool. going to be here. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. <clears throat> so, yeah, next week will be really interesting. It'll be fun. Probably record longer. Don't know. Yeah, we're going to need more room. Yeah. yeah. So, we we recorded a, a podcast a couple weeks ago. It wasn't nearly as it good. It was a trial and error. Yeah, podcast. I mean, it was good. It was funny, but... Um, we wanted to refrain from like cussing on the stream and, and trying not to, and then we did still. But um, yeah, that did not work. Yeah, so we wanted to we wanted to have it more family friendly, where people could actually listen to it and not have to like do it in private or something. And uh, you know, I, I feel like there's plenty of things to talk about that you don't have to involve mm -mm. that type of stuff. But oh, there's plenty of stuff to talk about. We could talk about yeah. guns, cars, airplanes, boats. Gun cigars so what okay honestly like what is your all time favorite cigar probably the tabernacle by foundation you still like that thing no, that's a phenomenal cigar I, like it, you like it more than the broadleaf no well, that's not fair I mean, what about that that one that we were testing for the one year uh, about three months ago that was a good flavorful one that was a good flavorful cigar but I wanted something unique on the blend mm -hmm. uh, and and um, it was pretty unique. It was unique, but what, what I also blend? wanted the figure auto. What shit. blend was it? That one, what was in that? Oh, oh it was it a had... Habana wrapper. That's right. It had a Habana wrapper with a Sumatra binder with a Dominican Lajero filler. That's right. Yeah, it had. It was a really good flavor. It was really good. Mm -hmm. And um, I smoked, uh, did I smoke the Cuban that night when I tried it? I can't remember. I drank it. Uh, in, so. Yeah, we had some uh, Cubans that a friend of ours got, and they they were real. Like, uh, what? Yeah, were, they were real. What they're were they? Partigas. Partigas. Okay, yeah, they were. Man, that was good. The flavors, you know, like the, but the Havana tobacco is good, or the Havana, Havana, or Havana. Habano or isn't it Habana? Havana. Havana. No, no, the tobacco Habano. 
Cuban? No, oh, that's a just... You just say Cuban tobacco. It's okay, maybe head, I heard from that. From Havana. Anyways, the Cuban tobacco that was in it, it had some flavor. You know, it has that unique Cuban taste, and uh, which, is, which is good. It's not like full... It's not full body, but, in uh, my opinion. It's not very full. But you do get like a good like feeling from it. It's probably cocaine or something, but it was, it was a good cigar. It was a really good cigar. Um, I just realized what you said. What? The cocaine part. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, you never heard that before? No. Really? You never heard of a cocaine cigar? Like, like that's what a lot of people believe um, about Cubans. You just all the fucking... Um, so... I don't know. I don't know. Um, I feel like we need to talk about guns. Do you at want? least once. Why do you want to talk about guns? Alright, let's talk. Talk about your guns. Oh, actually, so, okay, so his, uh... You got better guns than I do. I don't have better guns. You got cooler guns. All right, well, we'll talk about them another time. Um, one of the most awesome forty-five pistols I have ever seen, he's got. You want to show us it? Sure. I mean, just leave it loaded. Screw it, you know? No. It's clear. Yeah, calm down. I think, the, I think the audio is definitely not synced anymore. <laughs> is it? I like how it goes solid red after that. Alright. Yeah, I think we went to like two second delay or something. So I have a H&K USP 45 Tactical. Probably my favorite gun ever. I love this gun. Why don't you show it? It shoots amazing. Try not to flag you. So. Me? That's my H and K. I love it. Fantastic yeah, gun. Yeah, big gun. It is a <clears throat> pretty bulky gun. Uh, I, but I love it. It shoots amazing. Just H and K. They never ever disappoint. Ever. Yeah. I carry the uh, VP40, and that's the yeah, that's forty cal. Yeah. They have a nine millimeter one, but I, I, gun. I like the the yeah. VP series. That's great series. Yeah, but that. That 45, it's like, it's heavy, it's balanced, like, perfect. You know, normally you get a 45 and it's, you know, like, um, not that bad, but... Yeah, you were a little over dramatic. Yeah, that but it's, you know, it's it's got a good kick, but, like, when the gun's balanced and it's weighted and everything, like, it's, it's just solid recovery. Yeah, it's just... The construction of this gun, the engineering in it, is, uh, I love it. I love it. And then I also have a... Caspian 1911 that is oh that gun is just probably one of the smoothest shooting guns I've ever shot it'd and be an honor to be shot by that yeah <laughs> and then I have a uh, Mossberg shockwave that I just bought for my girlfriend which is I'm sure you know what the shockwave is so it's the 14 inch barrel with a little nub yeah that thing's mean it. yeah and, uh, you, just, you sit there holding it, hoping someone breaks in. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing about a shotgun is you don't even have to fire it. Usually, sometimes all you have to do is rack it. This one time. Yeah. And they. Who was it? The uh, that one rallied officer. I'm not gonna say name. Um. He was talking about the old school shotguns mm -hmm. or something, didn't he? What did when there was a story with him or something like that, and someone and he pulled it out. And racked it, and they were just like, "Oh they crap!" Just stop, <laughs> just in their tracks. So I think it was. Uh, God, I'm gonna have to ask him about that story again. I, I can't remember. Yeah, he said. I remember he said something about like something happened or whatever, and then they aimed. He pulled the shotgun out, and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and the guy was like, "Oh, no." Yeah, it's known as the universal asshole pucker. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And then you got your. Uh, Stub nose 357? Yes, I have uh, my everyday carry is a snub nose. You get them, they're awesome. I got a stub nose 357. It's my everyday carry. Little guy. It's, it's easy, it's concealable, won't jam. It's 
phenomenal gun. It, but when it goes off, it goes off. Yeah. That, that is one hell of a round. 357 Magnum is an awesome round. Mm -hmm. Just the ballistics behind it, and it is awesome. Definitely. Yes. Well, what do you think? Um, well, I, I like this. I'm hoping that the audio is synced up. Mm hmm. Because it looks like um, maybe a one or two second delay. Oh, well. Wait, maybe. Definitely a lot. Yeah, that, that's a delay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well. All right, well, let's see what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, till next time. Yeah, join our, or come to our event next week you guys will like it this cigar is fantastic mm -hmm. and you got to try it seriously and we uh in fuego is always a great time it's it always is. great it's the, comfortable it's very comfortable yes, it is uh, it's a cool you know there's a uh, relaxing environment yeah even when there's a lot of people there it's still mm -hmm. like just chill like you know nobody nobody i mean generally nobody's annoying mm -mm. and it's uh, yeah sometimes mm. you know when your dad shows i'm just kidding <laughs> he brings the dog no, it's always fun. Um, but yeah, we're going to have uh, One Shot One there and Sergeant Smokey. Bingo. There, there you go. go. See, I he is I, terrible with names. I keep messing it up. See, I don't even remember my own name. Yeah. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. And uh, we're really excited to see everyone. Always great people that come out. Um, we met a lot of people that are in law enforcement and other agencies mm -hmm. that were very cool, very cool, like awesome stories to listen to, ex-military, Vietnam vets, everything, just yeah. amazing stories. It is so much fun. Like, honestly, it's, it's, it is so much fun talking to these people. Yes, uh, if you come out, you will greatly enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, everyone is always great to talk to. Yes, there's going to be uh, a lot of law enforcement will be there. Uh, to show support, which we are very grateful for having that following. Hmm. But yeah, it's going to be a good time. Um, we got a lot of future events. Our podcast next week is going to be awesome. Don't miss it. And um, you'll see more of us around. We're going to try to record, you know, next week when we're at that uh, that event. Maybe we'll record some stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have some videos up on it. We're going to try to do more videos and just kind of engage with everyone. Yeah. Kind of build up a community and everything. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of a vlog video with uh, Juan and Sergeant Smokey. Mm -hmm. uh, just to show what a good time it was. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. We've been waiting on this for a while. Like, this is like... We started planning this back in February of 2022. Yeah. It felt like it was like forever ago. To be honest, yeah, it really does. It feels well. We've you know, been even even from like February, how much we've grown since then too. Oh yeah, I mean, it's we've gained a, quite a following mm -hmm. since then. Yeah, it's cool, and we uh, we appreciate everyone that has ordered cigars from us, mm -hmm. left reviews, everything. Like, honestly, it's uh, we would not be here. Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for you. Yeah, it's uh. It, it's great to have a community and, and support from people. It's it's amazing because it, it you know it keeps us going, keeps us driven, and and we want to do the best we can for the community and and people that you know that risk their lives every day for us. Like we Absolutely. we love that. Like that's something that's been something we want to do our entire lives. Mm -hmm. Just help out that way. And it's really cool. It's it's honestly an honor to to feel that to actually be able to. Um, you know, provide something or do something at least, you know, it's so, it's so hard to feel like you like, yeah. you know, you can't really do anything, you know, but like you really can, if you try, like if you, you go and you seek it out, like you can actually, actually do stuff for these people that, that helps them tremendously. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, uh, I want to throw one little piece in here. If you're in law enforcement, uh, you're a firefighter, you're military and you're going through a hard time, uh, um, you know, personally, yeah. Uh, give us a call. Talk to us. Mm -hmm. If if you feel like you have no no one to talk to, I've been there. It sucks. Uh, please, give us a call. Talk to us. We'll we'll bring you out here. We'll smoke a cigar. We'll hang out. We'll show you a good time. We'll we'll you can vent to us. It's all right. We we understand. Yep. Uh, 
I, I especially understand what you're going through mm-hmm. and uh, do not feel like you're alone. Yeah, yeah. It's so hard, like, whenever you're going through a rough time to not feel like anyone cares. Yes. And <clears throat> it, you definitely feel that, seriously. And I, I think recently here in Rowlett, one of the officers took their life, you know, so yeah. it, it's just terrible. You know, like, it's there, there's no reason that you should get to that point. Mm-hmm. You know, you should have support. You should have... Um, just ways that, it, that people can can talk to you and and just know that there honestly there's more people that like and respect police than there are people that hate it. It just seems yes. you know only the people that hate it have the biggest voice and it's ridiculous. <clears throat> so we want to overpower that. We want to do what we can to connect and and be friends with people. Like we want to be friends with with every law enforcement officer. Like we want we want to make those good connections and to show that like you know. We're here for them. Absolutely. As, as a yes. community member, like we, we really respect them. Like we mm-hmm. really respect law enforcement, and we want to do everything we can to support you guys, and then the guys in the military too. We know that you guys go through a really hard time too, and mm-hmm. so you know, just know that like people are here, and I mean, you don't even have to talk about it. Just engage with friends, friendly conversation and stuff. It boosts yeah. your mood. It keeps Absolutely. you up. You know, like. You don't have to talk about bad things no, or anything just, like that. If you just want to come hang out, smoke a cigar, I mean, uh, we, d- we don't really drink, partly, mm-hmm. but, so we don't do that, but uh, just come hang out, smoke a cigar, have a good time. Yeah, I mean, if you want to have a glass of whiskey, it's fine. But like, yeah, absolutely. But, like, yeah, we don't drink too much. No. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, you can find our number on the website. You can message us, anything. We get it, like, right away. We get the yeah, messages. We, we try to respond as fast as we can. Yeah. So if you're like, hey, you know, you guys going up to cigar shop later? Yeah, come on up. You know, mm-hmm. he can introduce you to people too. There's so many people there that you talk to. They're respectable, good people. And Fuego, and Murphy. If you go there, great people. Like mm-hmm. everyone there is awesome. Everyone. You know, you you sit down, you'll have a conversation. Or there's something on the TV that you all guys watch, talk about, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, El Dorado and Rockwall, great yeah, environment, no, great sure. place. You know, things to watch on the TV, like hang out, smoke a cigar, talk to people. There's so many people that go there. And just, you mm-hmm. know, we went to that that veteran event. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, that was that really was awesome. cool hearing their story. Um, I forgot his name, but he built that business, and it was amazing. Like mm-hmm. his story was amazing. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll interview him one day. It'll yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. But yeah, we got like some shop owners that want to talk and everything. So yeah, it's gonna be some good podcasts that are coming up. Absolutely. It's going to be fun uh, connecting with everyone. So glad to have you guys. I hope everyone watched it mm-hmm. through. Um, we didn't have as much humor in this one, but yeah. like I, I think we'll adapt and we'll change we'll, it up and, and we'll add grow. things to it. Yeah. We'll grow. Yeah, it's fine. But I, I think this was good. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you all. Well, you yeah. all have a good night. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>